We are expecting quite a few people. Some of you know us. Some of you have met Coach Deb at the rink. Some of you work with Coach Deb all the time. Some of you have seen us online. Some of you are like, I don't know why I'm here, but my friend told me to be here. And that's really fun. So I want to say, number one, we always, always intentionally create a, an inclusive environment when we're talking skating success, okay? There is no hierarchy. There's no like, well, I'm a senior skater or I'm a junior skater or I've been coaching forever and I'm a new coach. We talk about coaches circle and skating circle and we include ev absolutely everybody. So I want you to know that right away that if you're on this call, you're meant to be here. So welcome, okay? Um, okay, great. We already have some cool questions. All right, we'll get to that in a minute. Already um, here. Sorry, Ben? You got some Q and A's coming in already here. We haven't even started discussing anything. I yet. know it's so exciting. It's so That's exciting. Cool. So yeah. on the chat, I'm going to be leading the chat, and I'm sure Deb will be able to help me because she's great at multitasking. And Ben and and um, sorry, Ben is going to be leading this whole session today. Okay. So don't expect Ben to act, answer your question directly. We'll, we'll kind of do part of his presentation and then we'll lead into Q and A, okay? So don't stress, we see your stuff, but that's how we're gonna lead it today. It's our first ever session doing this live. So remember, we're used to teaching you on the ice and we're used to you know everyone skating around and coming in to see Ben's video and stuff. But I just wanna start today's um, webinar off by thanking Coach Deb. So Coach Deb, we have been working together, I think seven years, is it about? Yeah, seven or eight. Yeah, I think quite a few seasons. We have a real, I'd say, chemistry, coaching chemistry. Um, I mean, beyond being really good friends at this point, right? But we we often kind of think alike, and we joke that we read each other's minds, right? Yeah, we like to bounce uh, things off of each other and stuff to make sure we get a you know an honest read of you know are we on the right track? A hundred percent. Great working relationship. I, absolutely. I would agree. And I think that one of the things that we, like you were just mentioning, um, I think yesterday in one of our calls, because we like to sort of touch base a lot, is just, you know, what would be a great thing to offer the skaters and how can we make it better and how can we make sure that the skaters that you're teaching have something to join that's really, you know, informative and fun and creative. And then we thought, well, if you're offering it to your skaters, maybe, you know, they're be more people that would be interested as well so I want to honor you because you pushed us to kind of think bigger than we were thinking and to try to present something like this and then of course you know always having the faith and the trust that we can host it and pull it off and that the value is there for you so I just want to thank you first of all you're very welcome it's always great to work with such professional people and I'm I'm really excited about working again with Ben because I, we did work together for a few seasons and um, always really loved his stuff. And, you know, um, we worked together with some kids some skaters and, um, you know, everybody's always uh, this team with Ben and Jadine and myself, we always have a great time when we're working together and um, it's nice, nice communication. So I'm really excited to see Ben do his stuff and um, yeah, it's kind of, fun to be involved with you guys again. So thank you for, you know, taking this idea and running with it. That was awesome of you. That's awesome. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Okay. So we already have 47 participants who are ready and ready and excited. <laughs> Sorry, Ben, but I had to throw out the number. I'm just really impressed. Now, really, really important as always, inclusive, inclusive environment. Please don't put anything in the chat that you wouldn't say to somebody's face. Okay. Always, you always want to make sure that you're being respectful just because you're kind of anonymous or online and people can't see who you are. We can still see who you are and we know you and we have your email address. So be nice. Okay. Be nice. All right. I'm just putting that out there because I would say that at the beginning of any master class. All right. So without further ado, Ben is ready and prepared and excited and has notes about the history of the axle and how the axle has changed, oh my God, so much over time. And we are ready to sit back, listen in, bring your popcorn and watch Ben. So thank you guys so much for being here. I'm gonna spotlight him and Ben, take it away. 
While we're on, and, and I want to thank everybody for joining in today. Uh, I think this is going to be a, a fun way to, again, stay engaged when we're kind of involved in this time of, of being off the ice, of, of doing different things. But again, engagement of the conversation of, of the axle today. Okay, and I think the best way to, to really put this into text is, you know, a good conversation with uh, Deb was, why don't we do the axle today? Okay, we... <laughs> Jadine and I and our mentor Stephanie Hamlin eight years ago developed the seminar, the Axel Masterclass with our company Skating Success. And, and one of the things that we did early on after I transitioned from athlete to coach and, and moving forward into seminars was you realize you do the Ben and Jadine seminar and it was a lot of fun. But what happened was we couldn't really dive down deep into something that we thought was very important. And, and give it its, I think, personal, really, really good attention that it deserves. The axle jump today that we're gonna go into is on every well-balanced program criteria jump. I mean, we're speaking from Canada right now. I know we've probably got people around the world, but in every well-balanced program criteria, short program, free skate program, you're gonna have this element, whether it's a single, double, or triple axle. Okay, and I think this conversation really deserved a whole seminar at the time to go dive in, dive deep, and go, what is it that makes an axle, first of all, happen? What makes it reliable? And what makes it score again, the GOE plus one, two, three, four, five. And that's where we're gonna have the conversation today of everything that we've learned from the past of where it's come from. And part of our saying at Skinny Test is we link the tradition, the tradition of where we've come from for years, years, years to the technology of today and beyond because there's so much tradition and so much great stuff that we've learned and we're continuing to learn. I learn more about the Axel every single time I'm giving another lesson or I'm doing, um, I'm even learning more about the videos I just prepared for this um, presentation because there's so much to learn even today and especially applying the technology today moving forward. So just to give everybody kind of a, a little background here, I'm just gonna do a little screen share. We're gonna be using um, Dogfish a lot on the screen today um, because it's going to be my communication device. It's kind of my tool that I use every single day when I'm doing a lot of video review. But what I wanted to do today was just kind of flash this on the screen. Here's my 10,000 hours um, back when I was 24 years old. I'm 41 on Sunday. Yeah, that's right, 41. Don't even talk to me about it. But Happy but early it, birthday, babe. What's that? Thanks a lot. Appreciate that. <laughs> but, but this was, again, my 10,000 hours. I lived, breathed, slept, ate this jump. Um, it's, it's one of my favorites to have performed in my skating career. Um, it, just something that I really enjoy the conversation of, not only in a master class, but also, you know, in, in discussion on day to day. So what I, what I thought we'd do... Um, okay, don't, don't hate me. I have to ask you a question. <laughs> oh, you're asking a question already. Great. Go for it. Here we go. <laughs> I have to ask, what does doing a triple axel feel like? You know, honestly, that was the most fun out of all the, all the jumps that I did. It's, it's such a right, as you roll the toe, as you climb, as you hit that axis roll, it's fast. As we talk about later, we're going to go into the frame by frame is the name of the game details and how it all constructs and works together now that we have the technology to kind of look at it. But it is, it is just such a fun jump, I tell you. I, that's the one jump I do miss doing. Um, some I don't. <laughs> but, but the one jump I do miss doing is that. It was a tremendous amount of fun to perform. So that's an answer to your uh, first question. So, but anyway, what I'll do is maybe what we should d discuss is the history of it, okay? And, and look back in time of where it's come from, where we went to, where we are today, and where we're going in the future. It's a great conversation. So maybe I'll do another little screen share here and I'll bring this um, up uh, as well. I just wonder where this uh, document is on my uh, screen here, if everyone can see this. Okay, here we go. Can everyone see this on the screen? Is that on the screen, Jay? Right here? Okay, perfect. So you know what I did? I can see it. Can everybody else see what's going on? Send me a little chat. Can you see it? Can you hear him? Yes, yes. Okay. We're all good to go? Great. Okay. So what I thought, I was, I just, I just Googled it. I just said, okay, let's Google axle jump and then see what we get. So we go to the Wikipedia page and you know what, honestly reading it, it's really good. Like I, I got a lot of great stuff out of just reading the Wikipedia page. So let's just start off with the first thing. The axle jump is called the axle Paulson jump for its creator, 
Norwegian skater Axel Paulson. Okay, so I'm just going to flash this. Up. This is the guy. Okay, we're going to have the conversation today of this guy. He is. We should all be thanking him for his creation and, and what he was able to uh, to give to us as skaters, right? The on the well balanced program criteria. So oh, no, that fashion though. No, but but look at those skates. Like exactly. go back to that picture. Take a look at those skates. Now, can you no, imagine? I know. <laughs> That Axel with those skates, like, yes, I think he's got guards on, but man, look at that. <laughs> Pretty incredible, you know, as, as we do review this. And, and, and what's really fascinating about it too is it, and, and I tried to get some footage for this also, but this was in the 1800s. It says it was the first skate to perform in Axel's Creative Axel in 1882. And I tried to look for some footage for this. I couldn't find anything, so I'm sorry. But I, it was, it's amazing that, you know, this has been done for over, you know, one, almost 140 years coming up. So it's not like it's new, but a bit, what it was, was it was a, a special figure because they used to do the designs on the ice. And then um, he, he said for Invented, it stated it was a special figure. And so that's kind of cool. And, and basically, so <laughs> moving forward, we talk about, you know, the first female skater to have performed in the early 1920s was Sonia Henny. And she was another Norwegian. Um, and she was actually, how many, I think she was like 10 time world champion, you know, one more Olympic and world titles than any other lady to date. But I do have footage of this actually. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go back and uh, do a new share. I was able to find something on YouTube and this is fascinating. When we look back in, in terms of where this has come from and where we are today, can everyone see this? So this is Sonia Haney performing the axel. Okay, what are your guys' thoughts? Put them in the chat. What isn't, do you see? That, isn't that something? That's incredible. So let's review that again. Let's maybe slow that down a little bit. Looks more like she's going to enter an FSSP or flying set, right? But this is the axle of what was done back in 20s. I mean, this is what, what it was. Ben, here's some of the feedback. Someone says, what the? Exactly. Wow, <laughs> what, but it seems again, like one jump. It totally. Cool. As, we, as we look into you know, where we've come from, that's where, that's where it was. And, and you got to respect the fact that it's, you know, it's at an era where they're learning. And even today we look back and go, what the, wow. You know, but you can still see, yes, enters forward, has that extra half rotation. It's still all of that stuff is there, but that's, um, that's pretty fascinating to kind of review some of that. So anyway, what we'll do is we'll go back one, to- One quick thing uh, Rory is asking, was it under rotated? And we kind of yes. those yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the, you know what, let's go back to that again, because everyone's fascinated by this right now. It seems to be a good engagement process, right? But yes, now, you know what, the under rotate stuff, and this is where it's going to be an interesting conversation was when we review a lot. Yes, I would say that's quarter. So, okay, technically, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But, you know, when we talk about a lot of that, remember what we had was a 6.0 system. So as far as under rotates, the criteria wasn't there yet, right? So this is, this is again, a beginning time. Of, of you know developing this skill and I, I just thought it was a really interesting piece of footage to bring up so that we have it, that. It looks really artistic the way she's doing it I think. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Very special. Okay so um, what we'll do now I think we'll do a new share and and it, it gets fascinating as we do this because we go back to this page. So the the second the, the first double axle and this is a really good one was and I remember this because I had a a tape years ago I used to watch over and over called Magic Memories on Ice and they did show this on the uh, the VHS tape I had that says American Dick Button was the first to complete a clean double axle in competition I will we'll, actually it says complete a double axle we won't call it clean because again I think if we look at it <laughs> with today's standards we're going to see something a little different but it, it was in 1948 so. Here's um, the footage that I was able to get from it. Okay, and everything's coming through on the screen, Jay. We're all good. Okay, so this is the first double axle ever performed in competition, according to history. There it is. Let's review that again. That looks like an under rotate too. Well, well on let's today. slow that down frame by frame here. <laughs> There we are. But according to history, that's that's what we had, right? That's the first one. I, th I um, think it's important, though, to not measure 
something before uh, today's standard and to watch it as a part of that evolution, Ben, what do you think? Well, and I agree with that statement. I think it's amazing now to look back and go, you know, th these skaters were trailblazers at the time of, of doing stuff that hadn't been done yet. And, and we, we look at it today's standard because of how far we've come and, and our criteria that we have today of establishing the fact that uh, these are clean jumps, these are this, but, but again, remember, we're coming from eras that were trailblazers, you know, to attempt something like that. Again, you, you notice um, also there hasn't been a foundation of access formed yet really in a couple of these examples, which we'll discuss a little bit later also, which is fascinating. So, you know, we, we, we got to give credit to the trailblazers of, again, our tradition of where we come from to everything that we've been able to build to today. So, you know, I give them uh, tremendous credit. It's, 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 uh, it's fascinating, but guess what? The story gets better. So as, as we go back to the history here, and I'll just um, go back to the screen. Am I doing okay here? I'm going to bring up the, uh, where's that one here? Let's do this one. Um, do I have it? Okay. Axel, we're on screen again. Right okay, now, now. Yeah, we're seeing we're the, um, so this is, this is where I'm going to be a little bit Canadian on this, okay? Um, because the first triple axle in competition was performed by a Canadian, Vern Taylor, in 1978 at the World Championships. This is the first one ever, uh, again, been recorded in world competition clean, okay? And yes, I, I do have um, footage of this one. And we got a couple of shots of it, too, which I thought was awesome to get. Let's review this one. Remember, this is the first clean triple axle done in a world championship. He's Canadian. I'm, I'm not personally, you know, I'm a little nice towards that, but here it is, left forward outside, climb, three and a half revs. And was ratified because he didn't put the foot down. There was that slight three turn on the landing, but because it didn't put the other foot down, that was considered, um, considered counted and the first one measured in competition. So again, climbing, there's the three and a half rolls. We have a little comment here that says that there's more of a sign of a backspin position developing in this. And that's where it's interesting. You can start to see, because again, one, one of the things we're going to discuss also is the evolution also brings revolution. Okay, the evolution always brings revolution. You're starting to see things now start to develop and, and start to have more of a systematic skating um, in, in terms of um, where, we see, where we're seeing it going. So I thought that was um, a pretty interesting clip for the follow-up. Now, Let's get back to this females. Let's just talk about this. You know, when, when we talk about um, the single axle being done, we talked, we had Sonia Henny perform that one. That was a video example. Now I, I tried to look for this one. Apparently the first double axle, and it says right here, was performed by Carol Heiss Jenkins in 1953. So that was the first one. I searched, you I searched everything for it. I didn't find any footage, um, but I did find um, a couple for the, the first few triple axles that were done. The one, of course, was everyone's famous in 1989 in World Championships was uh, Midori Ito from Japan. Um, the YouTube clip I grabbed wasn't very clear. Unfortunately, it didn't come through well, but I do have one that was executed by an American, I think we all know, uh, in 1991, uh, Tanya Harding. So we're gonna have a look at that one as we come up on the screen. And I think it's, me personally, it's one of the most spectacular ones that we do see still to this date. And yes, you know, continuing with the trend of evolution bringing revolution, here's the first triple axle performed, um, I think by an American, which you say American. Boom. And, and when you see these jumps also performed, you know, it's coming from an era where yes, these, we are trailblazers. We're looking at things done there. Yes, are slightly off axis. They are slightly out of axis. So when we were taking a look at this, we really have to respect the fact that everything from the tradition that was, was also an experiment of what was possible um, coming into the, uh, the future. So we really have to respect these trailblazers that we're seeing on the screen here. Anyway, I'll just stop the uh, share. So how, how are we doing with questions, Dave? We got anything coming in yet? Well, let's, let's just check in quickly. Um, does anyone have a new question up to this point? I mean, we've been using the chat a lot. Let me look over here. Uh, how do we accelerate in an axle is one of the questions We're from Nicole. Into that. Yeah. So I think that that's sort of a more technical thing. I don't know if you're thinking of doing more technical towards the end of the presentation, but do you want to take a little stab around that? For sure. What was that? What was that question again there? Jake? How do we accelerate in an axle? Okay. Accelerate. Okay. 
So when we're, we're talking about the axle, maybe what we'll do is we'll lead into some of the, um, the technique on it now too, and we'll, we'll lead into where we're starting to see um, the, the evolution and revolution begin towards the axis. So let's, let's go into a little bit of that. And we'll look at, and remember when I do this today, these are only examples that I've brought that I have maybe in my video collection, the ones that I wanna just show as examples. I'm sure there's many different ones out there that you know would be of a slight different perspective, but it's only of one perspective. And I think that when I do that, um, it's, it's just to say, okay, this is what I've got in my collection, this is what I've observed. So that's just my little disclaimer before we do this. But let's get back to something that was mentioned earlier when it was talked about the the axis. You know, you, you, you saw that, you know, Dick Button didn't really have that in, in a lot of it. But, you know, when we, we look at this now, let's take a look at, a, at something that I think we bring in the Axel Masterclass with and something that's going to be very important. We call it the backward upright spin or the BUSP. This was always, you know, now, and we have the conversation, I'm, again, I'm Canadian, you know, our, our developmental star system, it, star one to four, we have that BUSP as part of the well-balanced program criteria for a very specific reason. Um, when we take a look at this, we take a look at the skater, developing an axis side of rotation, her case being the right side, be able to see her really lock in and rotate. And, and when we take a look at this position, it's gonna be very important mentioning how one skater snaps into the air. And we'll get back to the question about accelerating into the jump, but how one snaps into the air and gets into what we call the lock position. Okay, so really just taking a look at that and, and, and making friends with how that, that key position here or the ankle contact that we see on the, the bottom of the screen and the arms in tight. Oh, I, I do choose slightly over axis side for this personally. There's a lot of different styles now with seatbelt. You'll see a lot of um, different ways of, um, of, of putting the arms. The basis of this, as long as that increases angular momentum and you get in tight, fast, efficiently, hey, you know, we're, again, we're all learning and we're all learning how to do it better now too. So let's hold that down just for a sec because I think you know this jump so well and you know the science behind it so well. You just sort of brushed over the angular momentum idea. And okay. do you want to, do you want to just, get into just slowing that down like let's say someone's new and they're not doing their axle yet for sure angular no. momentum? so angular is when you see this spin okay maybe i'll put it at a 50 percent start to increase what that's doing is as the as the arms and leg go in is it's increasing angular momentum okay in other words it's snapping fast to rotation it's going from a slower rotation going in fast okay and and generating that speed of rotation very instantly and and instantaneously and for the axle that's one thing that we're going to be focusing on today on how that's generated um as the skater climbs and maneuvers into that position a very very key point does that make sense jane Can I, does that describe okay because let's let's go back in history a little bit here when we talk about the um the axle this was a style that was quite prevalent back in the day, the delayed axle. Big climb, right? Big free leg. You'd see the double axle coming up, shorter free leg here, but let's take a look at that example. Again, it's one of my favorites of Robin Cousins, big, huge jump, but let's slow that down. There's the step, which we'll talk about a little later, but look how the skater climbs, big, huge free leg, big, huge arms climbing straight up, almost in a split position. And then at the last moment, grabbing that axis and putting the jump down. I got another um, review of that over here. So let's go slow. So you see Dorothy Hamill is gonna do the same thing. Dorothy Hamill is gonna climb very straight. Again, big arms, big free leg as she climbs, 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 climbs. So it splits up, creates height, but will transfer over to that lock position later in the air. Okay, so you'll see that start to happen. Now, these were performed back in the day. I, I wouldn't, I, I, you know, and it was, it was interesting. Um, the, I used to do them back in the day just for a lot of fun because they were really cool to feel that you could climb up. You just go accelerate that edge direction, climbs. And at the last moment, you tried to time it just right where you'd go hit the axis land. And, and that's where, you know, a lot of that style of axle was performed. It was really, really cool to watch. It was very spectacular to see. 
But now um, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at why that's not necessarily seen anymore, because as, as we've talked about earlier, evolution has brought revolution in terms of a point scale. It's more difficult to fit more rotation in the time that you are in the air, obviously. So we're going to talk about why we don't see that done per se anymore. Does that kind of make sense? So let's go back to the one question, which was accelerating into the jump. Let's go back to the, uh, the darkfish just for a sec to, to have a look at um, something where, again, this sport is all about a foundation, right? And a foundation is built upon. And it's built upon, built upon, built upon with tens of thousands of hours of repetition. So obviously, you know, you take a look at an axle and you'd go, okay, that starts off with a waltz jump. Right? You, you, I think that's obvious, we get it. But basically when we're taking a look at this young man, Eric, perform it here, one of the things the skater needs to learn to accelerate into it is the step on the foot, the load into the knee and ankle, and the acceleration of the edge as the skater hits the toe. So if we slow this down here, it's gonna step over his foot, Bring the free leg through. It's very important that that skater hits the toe on time and creates that load into the knee and ankle and explode off the toe, even if it is on the waltz jump, to generate the climb and the lift that's required to achieve this jump. Let's take another shot of it right here, loading and exploding and really trying to hit the toe to generate the lift. And, and you know, honestly, a, a conversation is the, is the key is the skating skills. We have to have some level of skating skills to be able to do that. Um, because you, you notice that there is a lot of compression, there is a lot of loading, and there is a lot of bang, roll to the toes. So skating skills, every edge class you're doing, every, <laughs> all of that stuff, knee and ankle bend, is essential for getting any of this stuff. So that's, that's a disclaimer. Hopefully that answered the question. Well, I'm really glad you brought that up a hundred percent. Um, we have some cool comments. People are really excited in the comments. There's lots of oohs and ahs and that's cool and boom and all that stuff. Um, Arno, who is a fellow dirt fish guy, oh, he's the guy. He totally does. agree about the skating skills. A hundred percent. Like I'm with you, Arno. I, I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Arno, right? Arno. Um, Give me a yes or a no. <laughs> um, but Arno is also saying, according to your opinion, what is the most important part to succeed in an axle? Um, and I, I don't know what your question would be, or sorry, your answer would be, but to me, it's such a package. It's not really one thing is so much more important than, than the other things. But if you can't skate and you can't accelerate an edge and press and load, I don't think there's an axle going to be happening. What's your thoughts, Ben? Well, and that's, and, that's, and that's very true, okay? Because again, uh, I wanna give credit to something that I'm gonna say when we're gonna get into, you know, some different styles of it. And I have to give a huge shout out to Audrey Weisinger for this quote, okay? And she's a, a great mentor of, of mine that I've learned for years. But she says, you know, that the flight time times the rotation rate plus the axis plus the desire equals the landed jump, okay? And that's just, that's just obvious. Like, I mean, we take a look at that. And by the way, I'm gonna emphasize a huge amount of desire, okay? You know, this, this jump is <laughs> not for the fool of the hearty. It's, it's one where we're, I remember one, one guy is struggling that says, you know, that jump just feels like it's jumping off a bridge. And <laughs> it can feel that way, you know. Um, but, but at the same time, that's, that's, that's something that is, is, again, a huge point to mention is that that equation makes, makes a lot of sense. So when we go through a couple of these more examples now, um, in terms of maybe different styles, but also will lead into some uh, scale of values in terms of what things are going to be worth. Um, and also go through a little bit of the frame by frame data about what constitutes um, an axle's, well, not only existence, but also GOE in positive territory. I think that, um, you know, this can lead into a good conversation. So I'm going to, I'm going to add to that just because it's perfect timing. Um, we have a question that says, will the delayed axle get you the same amount of points? Ooh. So I think that's kind of interesting. I haven't seen one done recently at all, but on paper, it should be the same. Okay. Well, let's dovetail into maybe what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll have a little bit of conversation dovetailing into the style of axle. We'll take a look at some technique on some, and we'll, we'll talk about, maybe we'll lead into the scale of values and the GOE stuff right now. What do you think? Should we just go there? Okay, because it's all interrelated anyway. Okay, so that's, let's have that conversation. Okay, so, and, and what I'll share with everyone, there's the, 
There's obviously the lifetime data that we're going to go through. And this is what I've observed over doing this for 15 years. Okay, there's going to be, um, how am I going to say, varieties of things. Uh, and these are guidelines. Okay, I'm not going to see this is the law and this is how it's done. Because again, you, you'd be shocked. I'd be seeing stuff done and, and put it in my dark and go, wow, I didn't think that was here before. So that's where um, the, the, you know, the, the conversation is going to evolve. And, and so we'll just start there, okay? So let's, let's go to a screen share here. Let's, let's start off with now we're in the new judging system. We're away from the, the, the old system. We've now developed it and we've refined it, defined it. We know what things are gonna be worth here. So let's, let's have fun with the, uh, the SOV tables. You can, okay. As you're just pulling that up, I'm just going to remind everybody, put your questions in the Q&A part, not in the comments, because it's going to get lost. So if you have a direct question, go to the bottom of your screen and press Q&A, please, and then put it in there, and then I can keep track, okay? Okay, so, so let's start off with single axle here, okay? And, and all coaches, skaters, you'd be familiar with this document. This is the updated one of 2019-20. Um, let's go to code 1A, okay? And we'll have that conversation. Code 1A is the axles worth base value at zero completed worth 1.1 okay 1.10 so i just highlighted here we have positive dividends on the zero to plus five okay and we have the negative deficit dividends over here down to minus five the reason that i'm a big fan of these goe scales is they're very easy to calculate you know if i'm watching something i'll just do a calculation of okay that was probably minus three you know take the 30 percent dividend down or deficit bang and get a surplus up but uh, but again i personally when i'm doing my well balanced program criteria and regrades to the axle i always calculate everything at zero okay and that's that's where i like to do that so 1.10 okay so that's that's for the single axle Let's go up to the 2A, let's go to the double axle, which is again in Canada, and, and um, I know we might have some people from the States on here, but in our pre-juvenile, uh, juvenile, pre-novice competitive categories, you also get a full bonus point for a full rotation on one of these. So we're looking at a base value of 3.3, but if you're in one of those competitive categories in the under 16, in, in our country anyway, um, you're gonna get a full bonus for it. So it's actually worth 4.3 at zero. Okay, now, if, if again, it's a minus five, that it does get taken down a 0.5 because you get a fall deduction now. So, you know, it's, but it is, it is a, a, a serious amount of revenue on any well-balanced program sheet. That sounds like a whole nother masterclass about, about strategy and numbers. Well, and, and you know what, Deborah, we, you had Judy Burwash come in last with one of the officials as well. And I'm, I'm just going to say, Judy Burwash is a great official. She was working with some of the kids. And I'm not saying that just because she passed my fourth figure test, okay? That's not, <laughs> it's true. But no, but, but because she is a great official, all right? And she's very, very smart. And I was listening to a lot of the conversations about it and in terms of strategy, in terms of, um, of what that, that means when we get double axle at, say, minus five or, you know, maybe potential GOE or surpluses on there. So um, that's, that's, the, that's the double axle at 3.3. Let's move up. And this jump has changed throughout the years quite a bit too, the, uh, the triple axle. This one back when I started competing in the new system, when kind of the end of my career, um, was it worth 7.5? The quad toe was worth eight. I remember that very well. Today, it's the, the triple axles measured at 8.0, okay, at base value. Now, again, we got our negative five. It's very easy to calculate, minus four, plus four. I mean, it's very easy, okay, in terms of the, the quality of what, what's, what's gonna be measured. All right, so anyway, just to go through that before we lead into the next part of where criteria and also, you know, strategy in terms of flight times are gonna start to equal a lot of this. So it, how are we doing, Jay, for questions? Everybody doing okay so we far? We have a lot of questions. So no way. That's what I'm worried about. No one's going to ask me questions. All of a sudden, we have some. So. Okay. So I'm going to ask this first question. Krista, I'm going to come back to you. I know you asked it a long time ago. I'm going to ask Deb and Ben. So Deb, how long did it take you to land your axle when you started working on it? Do you remember? Good question. Hmm. Single axle, I think it, it took me like maybe a month, but it was also summer school. So we were skating a lot of hours every day. So it's a bit relative again to the hours that you skate and how much time and, and you know, purpose you put into it. 
And so I would say it took maybe a month of summer skating. Okay, awesome. How about Ben? What's your Okay, opinion? so, and this is funny, Deb, because I know there was a big pause that I was pausing too in my head because it's now 1991. <laughs> That's a long time ago. But no, but, but again, I, 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 what I did was I was totally obsessed with the thing. What I did was I set up a founder trampoline in my backyard. I watched a lot of video. I did a lot of that. Um, I landed my first one from when I started skating probably in, in I would say six months. I got it. Now, it wasn't very good, okay? <laughs> like, let's just, let's just put that up straight. It wasn't very good, but you know, I, I did. And then, you know, I started to learn things off the ice. I'm a huge believer in off ice learning, by the way, um, in, in this particular jump. I think it really speeds up the learning curve and the learning process. So um, I teach a lot of that today and I'm, I'm a huge believer in it. So anyway, that's a, that's a good question. How are we doing, Jay? We doing all right? We're doing well. Um, I also want to give a shout out to the 88 people who are on this participation now. That's so amazing. So thanks Holy for being smokes. on, you guys. Um, that is incredible. Wow. We kind of talked about this already, but Nicole had a question. Why did they do it differently in the past? And basically it's because it has evolved it's not that they were doing it differently on purpose it's that things have changed and grown and developed like every single industry right we know more about the science behind jumping just like everything else right well and that's the thing i mean and that's why i thought it was really good to take a look at where we've come from to where we're going where we are and where we're going and, and look at this so what we're going to do for the next segment is now we've established the base values of where we're at What's going to constitute that? What's going to constitute your base value, you getting your score, and also getting some surplus in your GOE plus one, two, three, four, five? That's what we're going to have the conversation on next. So anyway, we're going to bring it back to the DF. And um, let's, let's do a share screen here. Let's bring that up. Still learning it. OK, were you seeing the screens and everything, by the way? OK. So. Also, what else? Uh, maybe I'll share this first, or, and we'll take a look at a single axle. Okay. Now, these are things that I've just observed in the past. All right, and starting to develop skaters learning this particular jump. We took a look at that waltz jump earlier. The skaters learning how to roll to the toe, generate climb, generate lift. But this is just one single axle performed on the screen here. And what I'm gonna do is bring up another document that I'd like to share with everyone. And remember, this is what I've observed over the last 15 years of doing this work, okay? And that start off, it's interesting, these are highlighted. We didn't do that just for this particular uh, webinar, but it is just really highlighted because the axle's always the measuring stick, right? It's always the well-balanced program measuring stick for everything. So these are what I would say minimums and I'm gonna say minimums to score a good GOE, okay? Of the base value, if not higher, because we're gonna take a look at our, well, our, our criteria where the judge is gonna evaluate the GOE. And you can kind of see where I have this column right here which says axis lock, okay? That's gonna be where we had that conversation earlier about the BUSP, the time frame that that skater maneuvers into that lock position. Okay, to generate the rotation and to generate the angular momentum that we had the conversation earlier. Okay, so those two columns for me are very, I, I've just observed skaters do this over the last 15 years. And remember the base value, it, it's, it's the minimums to create really good GOE. Okay, so I'm going to do a new share and let's bring up the DF. And that's the 0 0.350. Now this one's probably going to be a little bit higher than that. Let's just let's do another single axle. This one is when, you know, a developing skater starting to learn the single axle. So what I usually do for this is, it's a little bit of pre rotation on the takeoff here, but I'll bring up the time code to zero. I always like to put it where that skater's on that last frame on the ice, just as they're climbing. I call that kind of ground zero. That's where we like to see that. So it was 0.166 the skater makes it into that axis. Usually you'll see, yes, there's that ankle contact. They're in fully generating that angular momentum so it snaps into rotation axis, okay? Remember, it's a guideline. If the skater has more height, they don't necessarily have to get there, but it's a, it's a minimum to go that usually this is what we do see, is, is the axis line being formed at this time at 0.166 of a second, okay? So okay, we have the skater has been recognized. She has been called out in the chat. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Remember, this is just stuff that I've got on my well balance uh, on, my, <laughs> on my on my computer, right? Uh, so as as she does drop, 
we're going to see usually the minimums again for GOE is going to be right around here. It's going to be around 0 0.350. I usually see again when we talk about a, a zero or higher is, is that number. Okay, now this one did fly a, bit, a little bit higher. This one's about 0.4 of a second. So thus we should be able to see that GOE go up for that particular jump because it had the uh, criteria to do that. And you might be saying, well, what's the criteria? Well, what is that? Well, guess what, you guys? I got another document here to share with you. Okay, and this is why I'm gonna say, can it be done under 0.35? I'm sure it can be, but we're not gonna get the surplus GOE for it, in my opinion. Okay, because when we take a look at this, uh, this um, I think it's gonna be this document here I'm gonna bring up. Um, it's, yeah, it's this one, because I'm just learning the multiple. Okay, here's our criteria, people. And this is why we have this, okay? Let's take a look at these three bullets. And the first bullet is really key to, again, establishing a surplus GOE dividend on this element. Number one, very good height and very good length of all jumps and combo and sequence. Very good height. So from that perspective, in terms of generating some good points, when we go, okay, that should be able to fly that, if not higher, to create some good GOE. Good takeoff and landing. Boom, another second bullet. Effortless throughout, including the knee rhythm in, in the jump combination, et cetera. So we're looking at that. And just so we know those, those top three bullets must exist so that those four, five, and six bullets can be considered in terms of the GOE plus one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that's, that's something to really keep in. In, um, in perspective here, but I think that bullet number one, very good height and very good length of all jumps is very key when we're taking a look at the numbers that we're gonna be flashing on the screen. So does that make sense? If you guys, if, exactly, does that make sense? If you guys understand and that makes sense to you, give me a got it in the chat or a yes. Or a, <laughs> because I think that, you know, when you study this every day like you do, Ben, and you're so on it, you know, you're quick and you, you know, you explain it quickly. Oh, lots of got it, got it, got it, got it. Yes, fantastic. I just want to check in with you guys. Because you may say the single axle, that could be done at 0.316 or 0.3. Probably, but we're not going to get much surplus for it. Okay, my opinion. I do this a lot, and I'm just going to say it's not going to be that well exit. Just, I'm just saying, I've seen a lot of them. Okay, so let's go back to, it might say, okay, those are the numbers for the single axle. What about a double axle? What are we talking about here? Okay, well, that's, um, I got to share this, don't I? Is that on the screen? Is it shared yet? No, it's not yet. Okay, perfect. I'm still getting there. So let's say, let's just bring up a double axle here. Um, who have I got that would be a good one, one more, while you're searching for that video, Ben, sorry to interrupt you. Um, yes. One little baby thing. If you have never landed your axle yet and all this is new to you and you're just being introduced, don't be, don't be hard on yourself, right? If it's new, it's okay. Just get even getting a little bit of an idea Okay, remember, we're going to um, make this video available afterwards. We're recording it, and we'll put it on our YouTube, okay? So you can watch it again. Don't stress. Yeah, for sure. I'm just trying to find a really good one here for, for okay, here's, here's a good one. This is, this is, this is awesome. And she, she, she climbs on this one, okay? And it's a, maybe a little skippy starting off. We're just going to review it. Maybe I'll go to 50% on the next viewpoint, okay? So let's take a look. And remember our criteria of very good height, okay? <laughs> That double axle, in my opinion, had very good height. And in fact, let's, let's take a look at it a little bit slower. And we're gonna go to our chart in just a sec here. So as she's gonna climb, usually, again, we're, we'll see this a lot. A lot of these axles, the head will stay looking in the direction of the line of flight. It's gonna be looking forward like that. Skater is stepping up off the toe, generating a lift. Now we're gonna put that to zero, okay? So on this particular one, if we go back, and I'll just go back to another, uh, another one here where we have the flight time chart. This particular one, recommend the average flight time, and I see a lot of the averages, 0 0.500, half a second, okay? And the skater makes it in to that lock at 0.2 of a second, okay? So that, when we talked about the delayed axle earlier, they were not getting in that lock position at 0.2 of a second. That was not occurring, okay? And this is, this is where it's very, very important to understand to climb and then meet that BUSP axis in that lock position, 0.2 of a second is fast, bang. In fact, I see a lot of skaters that maybe have that flight time organized, 
but the, but everything's so big they can't quite snap it and get in at that particular time to generate that angular momentum and maintain the axis. Does that kind of make sense, Jay? We're, we're on that conversation. So let's go back to that screen here and let's take a look at this particular one, right? Now, this one might clear the minimum quite by a mile, but as she's going up this 0.1 of a second gone, 0.2 of a second she's made it in. So you see how everything's locked, maintain the axis side, and it has, has completely made it in, okay? So it generates that snap to rotation. You'll see the very strong ankle contact, the air position, she's very straight to the body. And there's the minimum right there. So as far as flight time, she's cleared it by a good mile. Oh, so I still. <laughs> Yeah, this one's up there. This one has m way more. So in terms of a GOE perspective, very good height, I would say that has been attained in that particular axle we just reviewed. Okay, so that should score a positive dividend in terms of the criteria of the height. Also, you look at the landing. Yes, it was, it was quite well done. You know, you, you could go, yeah, that would, be, that would be it. So as far as the minimums, yes. But as far as exceeding the requirements for what the jump is being done, you'd take a look at that and that would be in positive territory all day long in terms of the GOE plus one, two, three, four, five. So you guys, it's also not that complicated. You can tell as soon as you guys saw this jump, you could see it's beautifully done. It's fast, it's strong, it's high, it's well landed. It doesn't have an interruption, she doesn't fall. So, you know, if you don't memorize all these things, they're pretty obvious if you think about it, right, Ben? For sure, absolutely, right? And, and you know, you, everyone say, well, your eye can see it, yes, but sometimes when we're doing this work, it's like trust but verify it. Did that actually do that, right? Did it actually maintain it and catch that axis, lock in that axis, maintain that axis, sustain that axis, put it down over the landing side and get out of there? Did it do that? Okay, so and moving forward. And yeah. we have a question. Um, we can do. we get at full speed that particular jump before we move for, on? For sure. Should we do full speed again? Is everybody seeing it full speed too? I think I saw a comment where it was getting a little slow and skippy, but is it, is it, should we see it full speed? Can everybody see it okay? Everybody saw that? Yeah, I think that, you know, um, just to get an appreciation of, for sure, know, how tidy, how fast it is, the speed in and out, the, you know, height, distance, length, and that, you know, to get a, a real view of it, you do need to see it in full speed. For That's sure. And I think I'd agree. Thank you for catching those. You're right. Lots of people are I'm loving it. About fractions of seconds. It's like climb lock, climb lock, and it's got to be, be in very quickly. Okay. So that, that, that's, how are we doing, Jay? We doing okay? For it's so exciting when you played it, you know, full speed that people are loving it. It's really good. Cool. Awesome. Wow. She's really good. Holy macaroni. <laughs> Yeah, but a beautiful one to see that arc time at that point zero second. Just to go, okay, fine. That's that's what it generates that very good height. Okay, <laughs> so engaging in that conversation too. So should we move forward to the the triple axle maybe, or right, well, how that's generated, right? You are just for a little time check. We are one forty three, so you have about fifteen minutes left for your presentation. And you know, I was worried I wouldn't have, an, you know, I'd, I'd have too much time and you start to feeling air and then we'll go well, all back. But remember, the yeah. Axel Masterclass is a full day. So we normally have a full day. Talk on. about this forever. We so could. You have not attended yet. This is sort of I like know. a little sneak peek, right? It's, it, yeah, it, uh, that's it. So, you know, I mean, I'm glad that's competition. This uh, conversation's uh, moving forward here. Okay, so let's, let's talk about Triple Axel, okay? And, you know, like I said, this is the most fun jump to be able to have uh, formed, but let's go back to this. So again, a guideline of getting one rolled, I would say 0.65, okay? You start to see good ones around there, all right? Not to say that maybe if someone's really quick, it couldn't be slightly under, but average-wise, start to see them around there. Again, that climb to the axis is usually done at that 0.2 of a second. Okay, I usually see that occur a lot. It, the climbing, getting in, climbing, getting in, you can clock it and, may, and, and, and get into that axis um, around that time. Okay, so let's bring up another example here. Let's take a look. We're going to triple axel. Let me see one here. Yeah, let's bring up Elvin. I haven't seen this one in a long time. This is a good one. Again, evolution's brought revolution. This one is probably now in the, in the, you know, the 90s, etc. But there's still a lot of really cool stuff to take a look at. He's loading down into the knee over his foot. 
And you'll see this part here, the free leg's always lower in the back, very efficient arms, not going back too big. And climbing that head, looking directly forward, all the way up, you know, having that line of head arms free leg matching together, all right? And then maneuvering into that axis, yes, hopefully around that point too. Now he might be in a little bit later on this one just because this one has superb height, right? With more height, more flight, more opportunity to get in tight and rotate, but you have a little bit more leeway. Just going up, boom, you'd say, yeah, he's got a little bit of leeway because he's gonna generate more climb and more lift. And it's interesting to note there's half a second gone by. He's flying. 0.7 of a second, 0.75 touchdown. That was a good one, right? So you see really solid generation of lift on that particular one. So that was that one exceeded guideline by quite a mile. Great height, great landing. And again, we're talking about clean codes. We're talking about triple axle clean code, 3A, not 3A, <laughs> under rotator, <laughs> downgrade. We're not talking about that. We're talking about clean codes, okay? Because again, on a, on a clean code, that's going to be obviously more revenue on your sheet, right? So how are we doing, Jay? Anything else uh, we've got coming up here? We're doing really well. Um, Deb, do you want to read out one of the questions for us? I do. Um, someone was asking like how high the, double axle girl jumped and um, I don't think you usually measure that but um, what we're measuring or what Ben's uh, measuring is how long they're in the air not how oh, no. they jumped off the ice I mean we'll probably have to do a calculation to figure out how high did she jump off the ice it's um, when you're using your dart fish correct you're using your how long are they in their flight time um, and that's, where that's, they are in their yeah. flight. Now, now that makes a lot of sense. And, and generally that's, that's the case. What, what this has given us is frame speed. Okay, now with frame speed, we can measure time. All right, and we can measure time, which is, which is again, guys, just to be honest with you, there's not a lot of time up there. There's never enough of that when we jump, right? So what we're attempting to do is measure the time frames that were up in the air, what skaters do, what the average is skaters, when you see them maneuver to position like the lock, when you see them do average arc times, right? And that should generate the result, okay? In terms of actual physical height of that, you know, that would be, that would be an interesting measurement. I mean, you know, I, 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 with, with the dark fish, it'd be hard to do because you have to get a sink point and you have to do this, you know, it'd be, it'd be a little bit more tricky. Um, and I think my buddy Arnon knows how to do it, but um, in terms of actual time frame and going by the, the, the C, the frame by frame sequence of events that are going on, we can kind of generate a good guideline of what skaters that do perform this element are doing when they, um, when they perform them. So yeah, that's a good, that's a very good question actually. Yeah. Jane, anything else? How are we doing? Other, one other one Rory's asking actually really smart. This is kind of um, like a language thing he's asking to clarify the ankle lock is the yes. same thing as the average axis lock. Yes. Is it, and is that the qualifying feature or factor? You know, honestly, that's a very good question. I would say um, for, for today, <laughs> the arc time is important, but if the skater doesn't get in on time, they're in a little bit of trouble, okay? Because you'll see that they always say, you know, four years comes down to four minutes. No, it doesn't. It comes down to 0.2 of a second. And if you don't get into that 0.2 of a second, it's not a good day, okay? Let's just put it this way. And by the way, I had many days where that didn't occur. You know, you saw that axle tell you. That was one of the good ones. I had many ones that didn't lock in on time to 0.2 of a second. I'm going to tell you that. And I'm surprised I'm still here today. But, but yeah, I would say that that's a very deciding point. And, and maybe just reviewing today and, and the tools that we have that we're able to do this is uh, maybe, I'll, um, maybe I'll bring up something that um, I use as well as the dart fish. Um, and, and, and my sharing on screen here? Where yeah. actually, you know what I'll do? I'll just do a new share. Okay, this is the screen. And one of the best ways today that I find the skater can get to that point two of a second lock is the pole harness. Okay, because that's a very important thing to feel on this particular jump. So you had double axle, triple axle. And you always say, well, maybe the skater has the height for it. But what they really need to do is to feel this moment just after climb. Because what I'm trying to do is just guide Eric through because his numbers are pretty good, but get into the lock position. Okay, and that's for me, very critical, and they've talked about it too when they're in there. It's interesting, I'll have a conversation with this particular gentleman that's in there. I said, does, it, does the triple axle feel that much different out of the harness than in the harness? He says, no, it doesn't. It's just, I feel more secure 
And in training it like this, the skater is able to meet their axis more efficiently and on time like that without having to go, okay, say I didn't make it in on time and, and it's late and I have a huge massive fall. So we're really trying to minimize injury prevention a lot of the time when we're doing a lot of this work too. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, Absolutely. That's, what we're, Absolutely. that's what we're attempting to do. So, so Ben, um, where are we at in your list of things you wanted to cover? How are we doing? We're doing really well. I, I, I skimmed a lot of that too. We went through scale of values, we went through uh, flight time tables, all of this. There is, there is one more clip that um, I'd like to show, okay, and it's one that I thought was pretty spectacular because where it's going, I haven't discussed quad axle yet, but it's, it's interesting. It's being attempted out there, and I wanted to show one clip um, of one that I thought was <laughs> very, very good attempt, actually, when I reviewed it. Before you get out of the, there, or oh, never mind. Yeah, go ahead, Jay. What do we got? Boom. Let's review. <laughs> He's not it was a good attempt. I gotta give this guy He's credit. Not hurt. He's just annoyed that he didn't do it because look how many people are watching him. What's that? I'm just saying he's not hurt. He's okay. No, no, he's not. No. Don't but worry. Too. This is a really good example of really solid climb here. Okay, like really good. He's gonna lock in, rotate coming up to three and a half revs. And this is a quad axle under rotate. Like that's pretty good, you know? And, and I'm gonna give credit for anyone that's attempting that today. I mean, I always thought, wow, you know, I mean, if I had um, pole harnesses back in the day and things like this, um, you know, that would have been something I would probably want to attempt, but I have gotta give him credit. I know he's doing a lot of harness work on that, but that was one that he did attempt this year at the Grand Prix final in practice. And I just gotta give a huge shot. Like that's, that's so impressive to me that again, we haven't seen one done uh, cleanly in competition yet, but it's, I think it's gonna be done. I'm looking at that going, wow, it's, it's, it's very impressive um, that, uh, that that's being attempted today. And I think, I think we're really pushing the boundaries, but you can see how it's, it's shorter and snappy. Like it's, it's getting to the point where, you know, the, the evolution is bringing the revolution so efficiently that now, you know, it, it's quite measurable. You can actually see a lot of that stuff occur. So anyway. How are we doing, Jay? We were about to We're here. doing really well. We're having so much interaction, engagement on the chat. Like you guys are amazing. I'm really inspired. Um, you know, everyone's think I'm gonna do that one day, says somebody, and like, yeah, we're getting close, and you know, people are people are just in it. And so I just really appreciate it because I think sometimes, you know when you do a class, you're never sure how the feedback's gonna be. And just to see you guys chatting in there is very, very nice. Um, I'm gonna to move to the questions quickly here and just see what else I can um, pull up. Oh, you know what I mean? This is what happens when I'm on the spot. Wow, wait, a lot of questions. Okay, I'm gonna to go to the bottom. We got a lot, eh? Oh, it's, it's good. <laughs> okay, I'm wondering if you guys are doing more videos. This is awesome. Oh, thanks. Um, well. I don't know. We'll have to see. This was our first offering, so we wanted to see how it went. So Ben, Deb, what do you guys think? It might be fun to do some more. It might be. Um, ben, uh, this one you might know because I know how your brain works. Uh, we have a question. It says, is the axle worth more points today than it was back then? So maybe talk from your experience. When you did the axle, double axle, triple axle, is it worth more now or less than it was back then? How's it okay, changed? So remember back in the 6.0 system, it was all about a base mark. It was all about, okay, we think we're going to start at 5.2 today. That sounds pretty good, right? So really at the end of the day, when we talk about axle back, say before 2000, I would say three when the new system came in, there was really no establishing, okay, this is a base value of anything because it was a base mark of whatever the panel thought it would be. It went through an interesting phase. Um, first, when it when it started, um, I think the the double, the single, and the double have always kind of been around that sort of point mark. But I remember the triple axle went through a phase where it went from seven point five up a bit, okay, to about ten something, and you know that's where it went. I can't quite remember the number off the top, of it. but then it's back down again, okay, because what's happening with the GOE? You've seen this the scale separate to fifty. It's it's then and even the quad jumps have come down slightly from before. So it's, it's gone through a little bit of a phase here, but I think, but going back to, you know, 7.5, it's worth half a point more than it started out back in 2003 or four. I remember that for a fact. Yeah. Agreed. I think, I think 
I want to emphasize something just because I don't want us to run out of time. Every single position that Ben is showing on this screen, the double, the triple, you guys can work on that off ice, right? Because we're in a situation right now where people are not able to skate. And so I think it's really important to emphasize that that muscle memory can be practiced three ways. One, on the ice. Number two, off the ice. And number three, through, through visualization, right? Big time. And, and, and even right now, like I said earlier, I'm a really big believer in performing this element off the ice and keeping your muscle memory fresh, guys. All right. And, and keeping, this is why we wanted to engage in the conversation today, engaging in the conversation, looking at video, keeping it fresh, keeping it going so that we're, we're really making sure that, you know, our muscle memory, but also our engagement in this stays really strong so that when we get back on the ice, we're, we're still in that conversation of moving our skating success forward with regards to the axle jump, which is our conversation today. So. hundred percent. Deb, do you want to pick another question? Um, there's so many. Oh, there's so many. It's hard to go. Um, That's amazing. We've got a lot of engagement. I thank you guys for this. This is fun. We have some that are, what are some good exercise to do when just starting to train an axle? Um, I know you've talked about climb and you've talked about lock. Um, there's so many exercises. Maybe if we could maybe talk about how to enhance those two features, how to enhance the climb and how to enhance the lock. Okay. So going back to my statement earlier, saying that skating skills, you guys, every edge class you do is going to benefit the axle every single time. Okay. Doing knee bends and extends, you know, running the edge, how, you know, you notice that every axle that we reviewed on the screen, there's a tremendous amount of bend through not only the knee, but the ankle and be able to do that. That requires a huge amount of control for the skater to do. Okay, so whether it's exercises of, of, of on the spot generating that roll to the toe, maybe there's slight skid or pre rotate, that's fine. But as long as you know you, you continue to work with that, um, but again, not to not to downplay it, every edge class you do is going to benefit this jump in a big way. Yeah, I really agree. Yeah, good job. So we yeah. are we are about five minutes out. Oh, three minutes out. I just want to oh go to you, Ben. Um, I just want to. We have more questions than we can answer on here um, right now. But I just really, really want to thank everybody. And what are some things that you want to leave us with from your presentation, or some videos maybe that you want to talk us through watching, just to remind us of those key positions? What do you think? Well, okay. Well, you know what? Let's, let's bring that up and um, let's have that conversation. So, you know what, you guys, I showed some examples today of, of Axel and, and everything else, but remember there, there are different styles of Axel. Like let's take a look at uh, Plashenko perform this triple Axel here. Okay. And you notice his step is slightly different than mine, right? Like you'll notice that, you know, he steps a little bit more left side leaning the arms don't go in front to go narrow. It's a little bit of a different step, but here's what happens on all the axles, guys. They will climb and they will go straight and they will meet that axis as they go through. One of the challenges of the axle is trying not to turn too much on that takeoff and then go into the jump so that what happens is the skater goes off axis, okay? And that's a very common thing in the learning curve for the skater to, to learn to do. Like again, you'll see mine here. I, I do a different setup approach in the arms. They're a bit more narrow, but each time they go through, right, you'll see Plashenko and I are pretty much identical, okay? Because when we talk about 0.2 of a second, there really isn't that much time to play around with luxury in terms of, okay, this is going to happen here. It's 0.2 of a second, guys. It's that fast. It's like it. So, you know, there, we don't have a luxury of talking about, okay, there's going to happen over here, 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 and, and all of this. It's, it's pretty precise. <laughs> so one of, the, one of the other questions here was, uh, there's kind of two questions from the same skater. How do you control rotation? And earlier she was asking about if I'm over-rotating. And I think we, you're, you're nailing it right now, speaking about you have to be able to also come out, right? And recheck right. and get out right. of that jump. And that's right. going to take some physical awareness for you to come in and out. And that you can practice on the floor. 
Yes, you can. And I uh, talk about direction of climb. Typically, if it's a step out of something, that would most likely be a direction of climb on the takeoff. The skater's thinking of rotating too much on their takeoff before they, they go straight. I always have a saying, say it, send it straight, then rotate, but don't forget to elevate. Send it straight, then rotate, but don't forget to elevate. Okay. And, and <laughs> it's just, hey, I, I, it's such a repetitive business. Why don't we rhyme in it? I mean, heck, you know. I, but your ability to rhyme is like, hey, Deb, like, honestly. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> just having fun with it. <laughs> okay, um, Arno is saying, Ben, you step a bit more forward than Plushy. Um, he does a short move with a knee up at the end. Yeah, for sure. You just yes. have that different stylistic thing, right? The machine yeah. technique. And, yeah. and it's really, really cool because you're, it's inspiring to see that it can be done in your own style. But the, the fundamentals, I think, and that's what I'm taking away from your presentation around the numbers, you still need the flight time. If you're going from dumb, double to single, sorry, single to double or double to triple or even the quad conversation, you still need that flight time to get things done, right? Yeah, and, and that's that's the thing. And, and again, it goes back to our GOE. It goes back to if there's very good height, that's going to, again, equal those, those codes on the sheet. And the rest of it, we just got to manage and get into the axis and figure all that out. But without the height, without the flight, there's no opportunity to stay in tight and rotate. And that's just the cold hard truth. So. Well, I don't know how this happened, but it's two o'clock. Um. Right. <laughs> And I want to thank everyone for this. Thank you, Deb. Thank you, Jadine. Thank you for everybody that engaged with us today. Um, you know, as we're, as we're now off the ice, please, you know, it's wonderful to engage with you. And here's to all of your skating success, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, keeping engaged and look forward to seeing you um, maybe in the coming weeks if we continue to do a, a little bit more. So we'll have some fun. hundred percent. Deb, thank you so much for the ideas sparking this and for being with us today. I really, um, I'm not sure if we can, but I know there's so many questions. Um, it's wow. really great. And I have an idea for the questions. No on and on and on. Um, like we barely even stretched the surface, really, Ben. And this is just one jump. <laughs> you no, know, and it's just one jump. And our idea was that we're like, we thought we'd, you know, get through the axle, but we haven't even like barely even really got, um, you know, there's so much more to it. Um, we're really grateful that we started this process and um, hopefully we can go somewhere from here. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. All Thanks right. again. Take care, everyone. Here's to your skating success. Bye, guys. Thank you so much.